Greetings fellow humans, Bat Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today I'm coming at you for the third time, but you're only going to see me for the first time. I'm really overloading the laptop that I use for recording. I'm honestly surprised it handles it as well as it does. I am still budgeting out so I can get a better workstation and that will improve my ability to record and not have issues. I just recorded half of this review and then realized that the microphone wasn't recording any audio. So it's just... So this time I have the microphone. I'm looking at it. We are taking a look today at the Keymove K68. Now this keyboard, or both of these keyboards were sent out to me by Keymove. They reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to take a review. Uh, I would do a review or get a keyboard in exchange for an honest review, which I was like, all right, yeah. I'll do it. I thought I was only going to get one, but I got two. Anyway, uh, they're the same except one, the Azar Hot Swap, one is loaded with yellows, one's loaded with reds. Now, because I've already gone through this a couple of times, um, the first time actually I accidentally hit the space bar when I had, I was showing the Bluetooth connection issues and it was connect, it connects and disconnects with two computers. I have, and this is both of them when I connect to Bluetooth. I don't know why, and it happens across two different keyboards. I mean, two different PCs and both keyboards. So I don't know if that's an implementation or some sort of bug. I did update both of the firmwares. This one took three times. The first one it said didn't work, and then the keyboard was dead. I thought, oh, oh, I got a dead, dead weight here. Um, but I ran it three more times and finally the last time it kicked in and, and it flashed lights. Now this has software and it does say that it has, that you can program key combinations. You can't. You cannot program function plus anything else. Doesn't matter whether it's one of the existing pre-programmed keys or others. It has four profiles and those profiles are the key settings for the top layer. It does not change the bottom layers. The bottom layers always stay the same. So function tilde is home. Function I is insert. Um, function delete is delete. It's delete. So it is not very well thought out and the fact that you cannot change those is a pain in the butt. Now it does have per key RGB though it is the strangest implementation I've seen. It has onboard effects which you can just select you can't edit even though it has edit buttons um, and then it has custom lighting effects so you create a new custom lighting effect and you can select a single key or rows or you know by selection a whole section so i did just different colors on each row then i try to turn it on as no and it says in the instructions that it will when you save it it will list in the in the onboard lighting method so you can select it no the only way that i was able to was actually going and changing the effects to a solid color or a rainbow and then changing this. Problem is, as soon as I unplugged it from my Windows machine and plugged it up to my Linux machine, that was gone. It, it was like I like when I first plugged it in, just a rainbow effect. Um, I also saved, I changed around some key settings they worked, I tested them, all good. Unplugged it, plugged it back into the same Windows computer, reset all over again. So yeah, you can save the profile and you know put it on the keyboard, but it doesn't seem to stick. Now this is all after I updated the firmware, so I don't know. Now here's just another little thing that I gotta say bugs me and almost makes me feel like I've reviewed another keyboard that had the same issue. but keyboards I use desk mats most of us probably do but this is what happens when you push it that's from low if you push it a little bit higher see what happened the feet just folded in so I grab like right here which is the edge what's that all about I mean I have plenty of keyboards that have feet and they don't do that. I mean, let me see, here's a key crown, put it on the feet. I can push it for as far as I need to go. And it's not going to 
fold the legs. The legs are gonna stay because that's what they're meant to do. The fact that that happens, and I was like, okay, wait a minute, maybe it's just this one. So let me take this one. Same thing. Uh, it's because these legs are not angled properly. Their, their angle of inclination is not deep enough and it needs to go about probably three to five degrees further than it wouldn't suffer from. That. That's unacceptable. Uh, because the standard typing angle at this without the feet extended is four degrees. So uh, I want to use it at this one, which brings it up to uh, 11 degrees, seven degree jump. Would have been nice to have something in the middle, maybe two sets of feet instead of just one pair. But, um, oh yeah, and the port's slightly recessed, so you're gonna have some issue with the, with some cables. But that, come on. Now, this keyboard does look like a low-profile keyboard, and that's the one thing I can give it is the design, um, besides the feet, because I would have done the feet differently. But the fact that it looks like a standard profile, or standard low-profile keyboard, but is using regular standard size switches so that is the only thing that kind of impresses me they have sunk in the plate it is a steel plate but it's sunken down and that's why when you um look at it it looks like a low profile they're basically hiding the height of that key switch right in there so i gotta say that's a pretty nifty uh, little effect and it doesn't sound half bad stock even with these tingy tingy switches because I mean honestly I don't understand why manufacturers you know if they want to sell their keyboards especially this one this one lists from anywhere from $69 if with just regular gainer on switches and then they have a black and white version though I did not see a picture of it I don't know if it means it's a black body with white keys or vice versa but with cherry it goes up to $169. Yeah, this is just plastic. Uh, I know, I mean, the thing is, Cherry Switches, if you buy them, they're about the same price as Gatoron. They're not really that much more, so why they're asking so much more with Cherry Switches is like, it's a head scratcher. Um, at 69 I still think it's a little too much. Now, if we have, actual better programmability if we actually had man if we had qmk on these keyboards I, i'd be like okay well maybe replace the feet you know or put some because i mean honestly i at this point i think just adding some rubber feet i could probably find like a seven five seven degree angle and just live with it um because at least i know those aren't gonna make it fall down but because i can type at 11 degrees but if I push it, I mean, come on. So while I, I really want to like this, but between the software, not saving, not having key combination, despite them advertising that also on their website, despite them also having a windows Mac switch, it says, iOS compatibility partial. What the hell does that mean? Partial? Why, why would you put a Windows Mac switch if you don't? And I'm guessing it has to do with the software. Now, it said it had software for Mac, but when you go to the download section, it says not for Mac. I didn't find a DMG file anywhere. So, um, make of that what you will. So, uh, now, they do call this, I guess, the butterfly, and I'm gonna guess it's because of that little ridge. Eh, it's all right. I kind of like the um, the border effect uh, that goes all around the edge. You can select, uh, you know, like single colors, or it can go through uh, the rainbow colors. So, had this keyboard actually had software that allowed you to program it, like properly program it, like I want to program the top layer, and I want to program what I do when I hit function or function shift in that key. 
whatever, key, because it says key combinations programmable. But even then, when you unplug it, <clears throat> unplug it back in, any light effects that you've done, I mean, they're still saved on the software and the program, so you just have to plug it back in and load it back up. But then you unplug it, plug it into another computer, and it's like it's a brand new keyboard, and none of those settings are there, unless you have the software installed on it. Because I plugged it back into my Windows machine, and it came back up the right way. So obviously, it's extremely depending on the so dependent on the software. And it's one of those keyboards that has music effect. For a lot of people, that's going to be an immediate dismissal. Why? If you're not aware, music effect means that this keyboard has a microphone in it. Now, they say that it's there so that you can capture sounds and match the lights up to your sounds. Now, the effect hardly works. I mean, I have put on loud music and the effect just goes the same. And I go from classical to Slayer to Bee Gees, just does the same effect. Doesn't really do anything. And that's on any keyboards I have. But what it is doing, it is capturing everything and trying to connect to Alibaba servers in the cloud in China. So is it a recording device? I'd have to look in further, but my assumption is that yes. Um, Windows is very prevalent to Trojans, malware, and just even stuff that it doesn't even detect because it doesn't consider it to be dangerous, like sharing your data. No, you want to share data failure, go ahead. Because Windows is one of, it's an operating system that has the most telemetry, even beyond iOS or Mac OS. And Mac OS does a lot of snooping on you too, but Windows, hands down, it's the worst. So honestly, I, I would not use the software for this keyboard on any, um, on any Windows machine that's not protected from the network. But the price, the bad feet, the bad software, the lack of programmability, the lack of storing, you know, like per key RGB settings or mappings that I did and plug it into another computer. I mean, that, like, you kind of lost me. I mean, I, like I said, I like the design. I actually, I'm thinking of modding it. Um, I'm going to do a stock sound test now. I'm almost tempted to throw in some lube switches in one of them to kind of do a side-by-side. -side. But I don't feel it's worth it. And I mean, had I bought this with my own money, it would already be in a box going back. Um, so while I like the look of it and I like a lot of things about it, it lacks everything else. I mean, they, they did a good job on the design. It actually sounds pretty good stock, even with pingy switches. But if I can't program layers, even in some proprietary software, I mean, if I can't program key combinations, what's the point? Because, I mean, I have to live with, who puts the delete key down here? It goes up here, or at least home. This, doing that is function home. Why isn't this function tilt? You know, function escape till. I don't know. But you have to live with whatever key combinations they've done because there is no key combinations. You could do macros, but that's only pressing one key, not a function that and do a macro. No, you have to tie a macro into a key press. There is no key combination option. And even the instructions they give you, it's like that doesn't exist. There's ad, they're talking about menus that don't exist. So I. I really wanted to like this because like I said, I thought this was a low profile keyboard and then I realized it used regular switches. I'm like, ooh, the things I can do. So I don't know. I, I'm going to go ahead and I got to think about it. Should I, should I switch out the switches and at least give it a chance? Cause I mean, these manufacturers really got to up their game there. I mean, we, since the Mons Geek M1, I mean, this is an aluminum kit. This is QMK Maya. This has up to four plates you can choose from. I do have the other plates that I, I'm going to be doing a video on that real soon. Um, but stock doesn't sound half bad. I haven't even touched it yet. Once I get to modding it, hmm, believe you me, this keyboard is going to sing. This is $99. This average is $89. So for $10 more, you can get this. Is it wireless? No. But it's fully aluminum. And it's QMK Maya. 
headset if you don't need wireless. Now they are working on a wireless version of that, and from what I understand, it's going to be like either 119 or 129. So, wow. Um, and I, I definitely will be getting that one. But with these keyboards, it's like they started, and maybe I don't know that halfway through they bring in another designer that did the feet because that's just I mean, come on. That, that's just, that's unacceptable. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Keymove K68 Butterfly. It is a three mode, 68 key, 65% faux, low pro. It manufacture retails from between $67.99 and $169.99, depending on the switches and the color of case that you choose. It does include NKRO, and comes standard with a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which they claim gives you 12 days of usage without uh, with the LEDs and six months of usage on the battery without using the LEDs. It comes in weighing at 647 grams and does have not only a 1.6 millimeter PCB, also a 1.6 millimeter steel plate. It does have what they call anti-static uh, technology. What that is is beyond me. Now it also clearly lists that it has partial iOS and Mac OS compatibility despite having a dedicated Windows Mac switch. It comes stock with double shot low profile PBT shine through keycaps. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 25 millimeters, providing a typing angle of four degrees. Raising the single pair of feet included, it raises the back height to 37 millimeters, bringing up the typing angle to 11 degrees.